So I bought a new spot welder. Um, in the pictures, it looked beefy as hell. So I was interested to buy it. Plus it was like $17, which is cheaper than any other spot welder. But in the picture, it looked like it was maybe the size of a sheet of paper. So I was a little surprised when it arrived in a box that's the same size as every other spot welder. But here it is. And so we'll have a look inside. Here's the leads. They are 10 gauge leads, which is good. A lot of the spot welders have 12 gauge leads. So this has 10 gauge leads, which is good. And here's the board. Like I said, in the picture, it looked bigger, but let's pull it out and, and see what we're dealing with. I will say I'm liking this big old piece of brass. That is, uh, yeah, that is interesting. I mean, that is thick brass welded onto all these MOSFETs. What is this? That's 12 MOSFETs um, all dumping their current onto this piece of brass. So that has a lot of potential. Hopefully the board, you know, the circuitry is not junk because 12 MOS MOSFETs plus like these brass bus bars, this has potential to be a heck of a welder if the interface or the circuitry is not garbage. So I guess let me uh, break out my batteries and we'll test it. I also happen to have a, a, a lead acid battery floating around so we can actually test this with a lead acid battery instead of my LiPo battery. So we're able, able to test this both ways. So let me break out my stuff and we'll do some testing. Okay, before we begin, uh, we should just talk about a couple things. Um, this came with leads that are designed to bolt onto a battery, not to use an XT60 connector and my LiPo battery is a XT60 so I actually had to build an adapter. Um, this is the adapter here. Um, it's 10 gauge solid copper and it converts you know it converts an XT60 into some light into some legs that I can then bolt onto the wires. The reason we have to go this route is this cable is actually different than most spot welders. This goes to the battery and go, the, and, and goes straight to the spot welding needle and it has this little wire that comes off just to provide power to the circuitry um, and this is how the circuitry gets its positive power but and normally what happens is you bolt the positive on here and then you bolt the battery on but this little connection can only take a little wire like this so you cannot you know, there's no provision to bolt the positive onto the circuit board. So it just gets power from this little power wire. And then, um, and then this needs, is supposed to bolt to the battery, but it can't. So I'll use my adapter to bolt it to my XT60. Um, the negative, this goes on here. And then there's a, uh, they give you a little negative jumper lead, which goes from the negative and again it's supposed to bolt to the battery but we'll use my adapter to to it to connect it over there so that's how the um, that's the layout of how this is supposed to supposed to bolt up it comes with a pretty decent manual um, I have to say um, yeah it comes with a pretty decent manual um, well I say that but actually only one side is English but that's fine it gives you the wiring diagram and um, it recommends a 20 amp hour to 65 amp hour uh, battery. Um, and then, um, anyways, this is so this is a, supposed to be a little LCD screen, which is supposed to s display some information. We have three buttons: negative, positive, and set. Uh, this basically doesn't even say what the batteries, what the buttons do. Um, and this side is all is all Chinese and is the same as this. I don't think it ever actually says what the battery, uh, what the buttons do. So that's not helpful. Anyways, we'll have to um, we'll have to um, figure it out. Um, all right, let me uh, rig up my wiring. We'll play with the screen and then we'll go from there. Okay, I have rigged up my adapter here. So this is some solid copper. 10 gauge, I think, I think it's actually 8 gauge solid copper, into, uh, through a bolted connection into the device. Here's the positive lead, which is just goes straight to the needle. 
um, and then it gets its power on this little jumper wire and then the ne you know the negative comes off after the MOSFETs. So we are ready to plug in the battery and see what happens on the screen and what happens. So let's go, let's flip that the right way and plug it up. Okay. So, interesting, good. It tells me the temperature. Can you see that? Um, tells us the temperature and the battery voltage, which is good. Now, let's see what happens when I go plus. So, plus and minus do nothing. Okay, so let's try set. So, there's seg1, seg2, seg3, return. So, the only option is seg1, seg2, and seg3. Let's assume those are power levels. Oh, I guess I get to pick my delay. I guess I get to pick these options and maybe save them. How high does this go? Okay, so it's, it seems like it's, it seems like it's uh, like a percentage. Okay, let's try 30% with a delay of 10. I don't know what that is, but let's save that. Okay, so let's see what happens now. Here is a battery. Here is a piece of uh, 0.15 nickel, 0.15 is what I use. And I am using, again, I am using the stock needles that come with. Normally I don't use the stock needles because they're normally 12 gauge. But this actually came with a 10 gauge stock needle. So I'm gonna try the stock needles. And again, I'm on, in theory, I'm on 30%, although the screen hasn't gone away. So I don't know. Let's just try what happens. Oof. I would almost like to sharpen these needles. I don't know if you can see how blunt they are. Um, you know, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a test rip on some nickel on nickel before I, before I begin. Um, I don't want to damage the battery if this is somehow crazy powerful or something like that. Let's see what happens here. Okay, I mean it went. Okay, did something. Not enough to, you know, blow through the nickel or anything like that, so this is good. Let's, uh, let's do a couple. Wow, okay. That delay is way too short. I think that delay is like 10 milliseconds or something like that. It's way too short. Let me try and edit that. Let's go to like 55 milliseconds, save that. All right, let's try this again. See if that does anything. And I might have the delay. Oh, I don't think it spot welds when it's in the menu. Okay, when I think when you're in the menu, it doesn't uh, spot weld. Let's go back to the main menu. Okay, that was a great spot weld, but that delay still seems very quick. And I just pulled apart my battery here. What's going on here? These are very solid spot welds. Look tore clean, tore clean through the nickel, left behind the spot weld on the battery. I mean, these are very, very solid spot welds. Um, very impressed. Confused by the display though. You know, still trying to figure out how do you know you're in power one or power two? 
I mean, if you hold the button, does it do anything? If you hold the button, does it do anything? No. If you hold the button, does it do anything? Okay, what happens if I'm... I mean, how do you know you're in... In, you know, in power level one, two, or three here, I don't know. Okay, I mean, that seems like, I don't know, that seems like that might be in that, it seems like that might be turned down using, the, let's, I don't know, it's hard to tell. Woo! Big burn through. Yeah, you got to, the, 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 man, I got to see if there's another button on here. What am I missing here? I feel like, interesting. This is a, um, this is actually a temperature sensor that's kind of pushed up against the, uh, against the bus bar. Very interesting. Look, if I put my finger on it, the temperature is going up. Yeah, so it's got a thermal, it's got a thermal sensor, which is really good because you know my BR FIC spot welder gets incredibly hot and wants to, um, nearly wants to melt half the time. I'm still confused by this display. Um, you know, how do I know which power, you know, level I'm in? Uh, let me pull this tape off. Make sure it's not hiding any part of the screen or anything like that. It is not. Okay, through trial and error, I have figured out how the controls work. When you go into the menu and it says segment one, segment two, segment three, it's talking about segment one is this group of MOSFETs, segment two is this group of MOSFETs, and segment three is this group of MOSFETs. So what you can actually do is time the MOSFETs separately. Now, why you would want to do that, I don't know. Um, but when I was setting segment 1 to 30 with a long delay and everything else to was still at 10 with a short delay, what was segment 1 wasn't even firing. I was basically just getting segment 2 and 3 because those fired they had a shorter delay so they fired before segment 1 because I had the delay different. Now I have all three of them set with a power of 20 and a delay of 30. And they're all the same. Power of 20, delay of 30. And uh, they're all like that now. So now what's happening is all of them are firing at the same time with the same power with the same delay. And uh, now it's, it, I mean, it makes, it was making a good spot weld before and it's still making a good spot weld. It takes, um, it takes, uh, it's a weird interface. Why you would want to time some MOSFETs different than other MOSFETs, I have no idea, but oh, a little too, there you go. I mean, this thing, this thing makes really good spot welds. And I warn you, I did some testing with um, going up to like 30 on all of the MOSFETs. And I mean, I just devastated and blew through a test piece and I'm glad I tested it before I tested it on the battery because I mean that might have blown through the top of the battery this thing can hit way harder than you would ever need um, the interface is weird I don't know why you would control the MOSFET separate why can't I just pick one power level and one delay but you're controlling the MOSFET separately which is okay you know now that I know that fine and I mean, like I said, I'm on like 20 on all 20% on all the MOSFETs and that is, you know, plenty for a good spot weld. You know, this was 30 on all the MOSFETs, I think. And I mean, it just devastated right through the, through the, through the thing. So, and, and in theory, you know, if you blew out a MOSFET or whatever, as long as it wasn't stuck in the open position, you know, you could actually use then the other MOSFETs to, you could keep spot welding by delaying the, the one that was blown and then using the other MOSFETs. So that's interesting. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I mean, power is not this thing's problem. I mean, this thing is is whacking. Um, now, I, my delay is still very short. This thing, spot welds, almost a second the needle touches. I probably need a longer delay. Um, but, you know, that's nickel on nickel. Tore, look at that. It's torn right through. That little quick, that little, two little, bloop, bloop. And now the nickel is tearing clean. You know, nickel on nickel is tearing clean through. This thing, I mean, this thing is ridiculous in the amount of power it can deliver. And uh, we definitely, you know, for the, uh, you know, for the first time, I think the, the spot weld is actually more capable than the battery. We've never had a problem with the battery, but um, for once, I think the spot welder is more than capable of keeping up with my LiPo battery. So, um, yeah, I mean, these, you know, the only problem, I, you know, these needles um, are getting crusted up pretty quickly because... Especially when I was doing those like tests and I ended up burning through all that burn through stuck to the needles. So I actually had to clean the needles up with a file. Um, so you will have to keep your needles clean. But I like these needles. This is a, another piece of that, that brass right there with the needle soldered on the end. Um, so, and this needle is, is not hot. Um, the temperature is fine. Um, so. Uh, you know, the needles are actually nice. The spot welder, although the interface is bizarre, um, it, it actually seems, and, and everything is actually cool. And, and it even, I mean, it's even got a temp sensor, um, so you can see the temperature of the board. I, I like this thing. I mean, the interface is bizarre. But from a pure capabilities point of view, this, this thing might be, might be amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, this thing really, this thing really hits. I mean, this is, this is my 0.15. This is what I normally use. And, you know, it's just, you know, it's just not even a, again, I've got to work on that delay. It, it fires too quickly. I got to try delay, work on the delay. I mean, it's firing the second I put the needles down and you got to be quick. You can't, you can't, um, Faff or, yeah, see, if you faff around when you put the needle down, it fires before, it fires before it's um, fully on the nickel and then it just short circuits and does a burn through. Um, so you need your needles down quickly. Let me, let me, uh, let me increase this, this delay. Let's make it like a delay of 50, see if that's better. Okay, save. Man, what a weird design. Who wants to control the MOSFET separately? Okay. Let's let's see how that does now with that with that 50. I mean, I just can't be mad at those spot welds. Yeah, weird interface, but, and I wish they had, you know, I wish, you know, if they had put a nice lug here that we could bolt the battery and the needle directly to like every other one, it would be a more, probably a better design. This wire is actually a bit short. It's causing me some, some problems, but I can extend this wire. All this wire does is provide power to the board. So you know, it doesn't have to be particularly beefy, but I'll probably extend it so that I'm not always like kind of tugging on this like I am right now. But I mean, I think I'm going to use this board going forward. I mean, I love the BIFRC, but you cannot really buy it anymore. And the ones you can buy all seem to be knockoffs and people complain about them. So you pretty much can't get the BIFRC anymore. So this might be it. I mean, this thing is, I mean, just look at all that copper on there. And, and I mean, you know, the temperature's got up to 39C, big, big whoop. Yeah, I mean, it's slightly warm, you know. Um, so, yeah, 
I mean, I think this might be the king. 